Let's talk about Dave Schultz, man. You want me to put it in two words? Wrestling and love. That's Dave Schultz. Dave was ahead of his time. He was a wrestling savant genius. He was a worldwide legend. He really catapulted us to be in one of the better countries of freestyle wrestling. His idea of, of competition was to be the best wrestler you could be using everything you can do and to put it together the best you can at that particular moment on that particular match. The way I view wrestling on a world level, a lot of that's attributed to Dave. This episode of The Ripple Effect, we're talking about Dave Schultz. And look, a ton has been said about the tragedy surrounding Dave Schultz's death. We're not gonna talk about that at all. I wanna talk about the man, I wanna talk about the wrestling, and I wanna talk about the fact that he was an ambassador. Not only did the guy win an Olympic gold medal, win a national title, learn to speak Russian, bridge the gap formed by the whole Cold War thing, you know, but also he's gonna go down in history as just one of the nicest people to ever lace up a pair of wrestling shoes. I met Dave Schultz my junior year in high school. He's the fiercest freaking competitor I've ever met. When it came down to competition time, he was a stone cold killer. Dave was just um, one of those guys that was always trying to see what he could get away with. <laughs> no. Most athletes have to have this kind of um, animosity, distance, separation in order to kind of get themselves into the psych of, of wrestling somebody and winning. Dave just didn't have that. He would wrestle and, you know, beat somebody fairly well. And then as he's walking off, ask them if they want him to show him, you know, what they did wrong in this move. I never saw hatred at him. Intensity, determination, action, aggressiveness, but I never saw hatred. With his biggest rivals that he had, like the, some of the nastiest matches I've ever seen in my life, he's like friends with them later. Even Kenny Monday and him were friends. The first time I wrestled with Dave was, I think, 1986. That was the worst match I ever had. <laughs> his mindset was what really made him who he was. He wanted to learn as many things as he could. Dave just didn't believe there was any wrestling secrets. His desire to learn another culture came directly from his desire to be a great wrestler. The best information came from Russia and therefore he was gonna learn Russian. We all knew that in order to, to be the best, you, you had to go through Russia. It was very different back then. It wasn't Russia, it was the Soviet Union. And at the time, you know, I mean, it was not our friends. I'd say the general perception from the American public, it, you know, is, you know, they're the evil empire and, you know, we're the great Western empire. Cold War was a big influence on that U.S.-Russia competition in, in any sport, I'd say, but re wrestling especially because it's a combat sport and it's one of their, their main sports. Like, it was a big deal and it was bigger than just wrestling. It was a piece of the Cold War. The Soviet team, they were monsters and they were like cyborgs and robots. Their system was the best in the world. And so they was about trying to get inside that mindset, trying to get inside that philosophy so he could beat them. How did he break through this, this, this Cold War barrier that was between the Soviets and the Americans? How, how was it that he got people to share their secrets with him? His love for wrestling transcended all of those political lines. He just had a great attitude about competition. He enjoyed the travel, he enjoyed the language, he enjoyed the food, he enjoyed learning, he enjoyed learn about learning the other people's culture, about learning politics. He learned Russian on his own in the most unconventional way. We had stickers all over our house, we practiced all the time, and so I think sometimes they surprised him how hard he worked to get his Russian to where it was so he could have the relationships. He just earned the trust of the Russian people and of the Russian athletes and the Russian coaches. Man, I'm sure Dave had to get a lot of blowback. There had to be guys be like, what are you doing? You're going over there with the enemy. When you get down to it, people are people. It doesn't matter what language they're speaking. It, it just is, we're all humans. They're on the same journey that we're on, right? There has to be some kind of common ground if you remove all those 
external biases that you have. His idea always to get all of the resources you can, learn from everybody, gather all of the wrestling tidbits you can from anywhere in the world, and then put them together as best you can on any particular day in any particular match. I mean, I think that was the greatest asset of Boxcatcher. Okay, now look, you've already got this. All you gotta do is get that foot. Grab the knee, put your shoulder in his rear, and drive forward. You know, everybody talks about the bad shit that happened at Boxcatcher, but uh, there was some times when it was like, I would say the best damn training situation you could get in the world. We advanced pretty rapidly during those times technically, and I think it was the relationships that he developed with Russia, Iran, Bulgaria, everywhere. How much expertise was that box catcher on any given days? Like you could, I mean, that's the reason you went. You brought in all sorts of international guys. Bulgarians, Belarusians, Russians, you know, I mean, you name it, they were there in the room at some time or other. But training wise, it was just a lot of incredible brains of the sport of wrestling in the room all the time. And you can't help but get better. Through that dialogue, your, your wrestling world just expands exponential. That's what Dave did. He expanded the wrestling world. The reciprocal of that is an us versus them mentality. Who's them? That them could be somebody that, that can really take your wrestling to the next level. I think after Dave's death, there was a theory that we all kind of went back to our own corner. And I don't think there was as much sharing of information. Now, I think Jordan Burroughs has done some great things with his relationship with Iran. I'm not saying that JB wouldn't be that kind of that kind of guy without Dave's history, but I think it certainly gives you a role model to look at. The biggest legacy is how many lives he touched in a positive way and spread his passion for wrestling. Wouldn't have a gold medal on my chest if, if he wasn't who he was. He's a better wrestler, made me a better man, and brought out the best of me. He was a connector of people, and he enjoyed people as much as he enjoyed wrestling. I don't think before him, we had such a person that was so interested in not just Russian culture, but any, any culture from around the world. Dave's idea was just to get more wrestling information and more people that know that information, and just the wrestling just keeps getting better and trickier and more fun and more difficult. The more people, the more ideas, the more technique that you can get have access to, the better you're going to be. It's going to elevate the whole sport. The relationships that Dave Schultz built back in the 80s and early 90s served as a bridge, and that bridge was wrestling. And people are walking across that bridge even still today.